When looking up into the night sky and seeing exactly the same constellations as our ancestors, it's hard to imagine that this abundance of white specks won't shine forever. But this is true considering one human lifetime. Some star is destined to become the last one in the entire universe. This will happen in the unimaginably distant future. We will now visit it using our virtual time machine. You'll find out what will happen to the polar star in 10,000 years, how the life on Earth will change in 50 million years, when will the last star burn out, and most importantly, what will happen after that. As long as we travel in time in increments of centuries, we won't be able to see any major changes. But as our time jumps increase, the changes will become more dramatic. So we'll stop in different periods when something significant happens. 1,000 years. A huge period in terms of human life, and only a moment in the life of a universe. Even in our solar system, nothing dramatic will have happened yet. The moon will move away from the Earth just by 38 meters. The sun will shine just as bright. All planets and satellites will move along their usual routes. But something will have already changed. Something will be wrong with the stars observed from Earth. Namely, the North Star will no longer be polar in the original sense of the word. But the reason lies not in the star itself, but in the Earth. Our planet's rotation axis will be gradually shifting its direction in space. This process is called precession. In 1,000 years, the axis will have shifted far enough to be pointing to the star Gamma Cephei. 10,000 years into the future. The Gregorian calendar lags more than a day behind astronomical time. We sincerely hope that our civilization will still be around by this time, with some of us looking curiously up to the sky. The pole star is now Iota Cephei due to the before-mentioned precession of the Earth's axis. And at first glance, it would seem that there is nothing fundamentally new, but there will be a minor variation. Barnard's star will approach the solar system at a distance of 3.8 light years. At this time, it will be our closest neighbor, closer than Alpha Centauri is now. 100,000 years. As a result of the precession, several stars will have replaced the polar star, starting with Vega. But because of such a long time passing, these events won't be so significant compared to other truly great phenomena. The sky itself will no longer look the way it used to. The proper movement of the stars will render the outlines of many constellations unrecognizable. In the middle of this period, in about 50,000 years, Niagara Falls will destroy the last 30 kilometers left to Lake Erie and will cease to exist. Our sun will be in full bloom Nothing special will have happened to it yet, but future astronomers will record more and more signs reminding us of the impermanence of stars. One of these precursors will be the famous hypergiant star called VY Canis Major. It will use up its thermonuclear fuel and explode into a hypernova, leaving behind nothing but a nebula and a black hole. According to another hypothesis, the star could immediately collapse into a black hole without any particular special effects. But VY Canis Major is quite far away, 4,892 light years from Earth to be exact. Its explosion won't be so spectacular when seen from Earth by the naked eye. Another famous star, Betelgeuse, will put on a much more exciting show. It is much closer to the solar system and lies 642.5 light years away from us. It will stay for up to 100,000 years, ending up in a supernova explosion. A second sun, albeit small, will shine in the sky. 
the luminosity of the dying Betelgeist will be comparable to the full moon at night. This show could last up to several months. Nothing like this has ever been observed from Earth in the entire history of mankind. Although the VY explosions of Canis Major and Betelgeist are absolutely grandiose events, they will go almost unnoticed for the universe at large. Indeed, the observable universe will still be teeming with life, at least two trillion galaxies, each having hundreds of billions of stars. An era of stars will be in full swing. The Era of Stars This is what astrophysicists call the era of active star formation in the universe. This period is when the universe can be considered fully alive. It is during this period that we were fortunate enough to live. The era of stars will last for billions, tens, and even hundreds of billions of years. A lot of epic events will take place over this period. In the next 500,000 years, there's a high risk of a one kilometer large asteroid hitting the Earth. This will put an end to our civilization if we don't move to another planet, at least to Mars. But the fate of the red planet will be even worse. In 40 million years, its own natural satellite Phobos will collide with its home planet. Keep in mind that its average radius is 11 kilometers, and such a blow will render the survival of the hypothetical biosphere of the planet impossible. As we get further and further into the future, the solar system will change even more dramatically. Let's see what happens. 500 million years. Earth will become unlivable for animals and plants due to the sun's increased luminosity and major temperature rise on the planet. After another 100 million years, tidal deceleration will move the moon away from the Earth so much that a total solar eclipse will become impossible. At the same time, annular eclipses will continue to be observed. 1.1 billion years. Seawater will completely disappear on Earth, and the average global surface temperature will reach 320 Kelvin. In 3.5 billion years, our home planet will resemble today's Venus, a hot, hostile world to all living things. 4.5 billion years. By this time, the Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy will finally collide. The two galaxies will merge into one as a result of the collision. This may not have any bearing on our solar system in any way, given the giant distances between the stars. 5.4 billion years. The Sun will start to turn into a red giant. This process will continue for 2 billion years. Our star will grow to unprecedented sizes, engulfing Mercury and Venus one by one. The Earth has a chance to stay, but it will only be a ghost of our planet as we know it. But at the same time, another world, namely Saturn's satellite Titan, can suddenly become livable. The energy of the huge Sun will be enough to create comfortable conditions for life on Titan. 7.6 billion years. After the Sun passes the red giant phase, thermal pulsations will rip off its outer shell, which in turn will form a planetary nebula. A white dwarf formed from the core of the Sun will remain in its center. It will be very hot and dense, but only about the size of the Earth. Initially, the surface of this white dwarf will be 120,000 Kelvin, which is 20 times hotter than is currently on the Sun and 3,500 times brighter. For many millions and billions of years, it will only cool down and dwindle. Similar processes at this time will be taking place in other star systems resembling ours, but the beginning of the universe's extinction as a whole is still pretty far away. 
stars will keep on actively forming and giving life to new worlds. But something completely unimaginable, both in terms of scale and uniqueness, may lie ahead. In 22 billion years, it might no longer make sense to wait for the last star to burn out because of absolutely everything going on due to the Big Rip. This is a hypothetical model of how the universe could come to an end and one of the most epic ones because of its supposed lightning-fast, all-consuming, and all-pervading infernal power. The bottom line is that the universe is expanding and it does so at an accelerated rate. And we know for sure that this is happening. But there's also another alarming issue when it comes to this. The universe is already expanding faster than the speed of light. This doesn't contradict physics, since we are not talking about moving objects in space, but about the expansion of space itself. The cosmological horizon is getting closer as the space expands. This is the line which separates us from everything we can no longer interact with. If the expansion continues at the same rate, there is a non-zero chance that this invisible edge will continue to contract until it collapses completely. Nothing will be able to interact with anything else by this point, and the universe will simply vanish into nothingness without a trace, as incredible as it may sound but there's still little scientific data to back that up. And such a threatening scenario is only a theory. However, the expansion of the universe will play a special role indeed. In 100 billion years, this process will destroy all evidence of the Big Bang, leaving it behind the cosmological horizon. This will make cosmology itself impossible. Civilizations who will be born and become intelligent during this period won't have the slightest clue about how the universe came to be and won't even have anywhere to look for it. At this stage, new stars will continue to emerge, but the majority will still die, either in epic fireworks like Betelgeuse or quietly turning into white dwarfs like our sun. And this will go on for a very long time but not forever. Era of Decay, one, one trillion years. This is the shortest time that it might take star formation in galaxies to stop due to the complete depletion of interstellar gas clouds required for new star formation. An era of degeneration or disintegration would creep in. 10 trillion years there wouldn't be any more stars left that were born in our time. Even the longest lived stars, low mass red dwarfs would have burned out, with a rare exception of those born much later than our sun. White dwarfs and rare neutron stars will be the only ones still left. 100 trillion years. It's the maximum time until the star formation in galaxies ceases completely. Star formation won't be possible at this point. From that moment on, even dead stars, white dwarfs and neutron stars will die once and for all. Apart from them, only black holes will wander in the ominous blackness of space. And this universal cemetery filled with the ghosts of the stars long gone would exist for an unthinkably long time.